Hey kids, it's Mr. Flyer here, hope you're well. Now for the last few weeks I've been riding this Mahusiv Maxi Scoot. This is the Suzuki Bergman 650 Executive. I've really got to know the bike over the last few weeks. I've ridden it for hundreds of miles in all sorts of conditions. If you stick around and stay tuned for the next few minutes, I'm going to tell you what I've learnt about it. Okay, so as I say, over the last few weeks I've been lucky enough to borrow this machine as my long-term uh, bike to review from Suzuki UK. So I must just say thank you to the guys at Suzuki first of all for lending me the bike. On this video what I'm going to do is take you through uh, all the things I've learned about the machine. So I've ridden it in the rain, I've ridden it on the motorway, I've ridden it down back roads, I've ridden it at night. Uh, you name it, I've done it on this bike. I've put as many miles on it as I possibly can. Uh, so I'm going to give you uh, all my findings around those different scenarios. I'm also towards the end of the video going to tell you uh, what the cost of ownership of one of these bikes is. Uh, and then I'm going to go through my list of pros and cons. What are all the negative and positive points that I've learned about this bike before I sum up? So uh, if you're interested in Maxi scooters, you're going to want to watch this review. So what's the Bergman like for doing big miles cruising on faster roads then? Well in short, absolutely fine. Here I am on a motorway on a lovely day. I'm doing, uh, well, indicating 75 miles now and it feels like there's an awful lot more to give. I'm not going to do any more of course because I don't want to break the speed limit too hideously. Uh, but yeah, the bike is stable. Uh, once you put her in a turn like this she feels absolutely fixed. There's no sort of uh, worrying wobble or anything like that. Uh, the screen is adjustable. I've got it at its lowest position at the moment and uh, I've just got a little bit of turbulence on my head. If I pop the screen up, there we go, it blocks that out. But I get a weird effect where suddenly it feels like I'm being sucked forward towards the screen a bit. I've noticed that on other bikes before that have big screens. It's a strange effect, sort of counterintuitive. It's nothing bad. It's not enough to sort of put you off having the bike. It's just something to be aware of and it's uh, easily braced against. It's not like the force you'd get from the screen on a, you know, on a naked bike anywhere near it. All right, let's just uh, overtake this car. Just see if she has got some overtaking grunt. Yes, she has. Absolutely loads of go. My word. Yeah, this bike uh, has no lack of power on faster roads. So if you want to do some big miles and tour, particularly two up, this would be a great bike for doing that. So faster roads, motorways, no issue on the Bergman. So what's the big old Bergman like then, two up? Well, at the moment I've got uh, daughter number one on the back, if she wants to give us a wave in the mirror. There we go, she's on there. And uh, she's experienced uh, of riding on the back of my big BMW GS. So in a minute we'll get back to the man cave, uh, and if I can convince her to have a chat, we'll uh, see what she thought of riding on the back. But from a rider's point of view, I have to say the Bergman is lovely with someone on the back. I can barely notice that she's on there at all. Of course there's a bit of extra uh, braking required. You just have to think a bit more in advance than you would otherwise, but nothing too bad. But in terms of balance and everything else, it feels really, really nice with someone on the back. So if you wanted to tour, for example, two up, it would be brilliant, or indeed if you just want to nip down the shops two up, no problem at all. So uh, yeah, thumbs up for the Bergman as far as I'm concerned as the rider uh, with the pillion on the back. Right, let's uh, head back to the man cave then and uh, see what daughter number one thought of riding on the big Bergman. Alright, so we're just back from our little ride on the Bergman and uh, I've managed to convince daughter number one here to uh, come onto the camera. Now, as you know, it's social suicide for a uh, teenager to be on their dad's YouTube video. How lame is that? So, uh, hence the blurring of the face. So, just go with us here. Okay, so thanks very much for coming out on the bike. What was your sort of overall impression of the bike? I think it was very good, especially the heated seat was a big highlight for me as well as the footrests as well, because they're a lot wider, yep. a lot more comfortable, and you can sort of like spread your feet around, that kind of thing. Yep. The backrest was good, however, I did find it a little, a little bit too low, which okay. is why I kind of do prefer the BMW's bike. Okay, and what about the um, holding on, because it's got big old grab rails on this. Oh, the grips, definitely, yeah. definitely a lot better, I think, because there's a lot more support, you can put your weight there, so that's also a massive bonus. Okay, well. and what about the comfort of the seat generally? It's a big old seat, isn't it? It was, although it was a big seat, I don't think it was like as comfy as the BMW. I think it's got a softer foam to it, but it was still very and good. And what about a heated seat? Heated was definitely good, yeah. So uh, overall, if you had to do a long journey on either the big BMW or the big Suzuki, which one would you go for? I'd probably go for the BMW, considering of the support and the bigger backrest. Just feel a bit safer on yeah, that, isn't it? Yeah, and, and just one other thing, of course, this is an automatic, no gear, so our heads aren't banging when I change gear. Yeah. How did you find that? Was that making oh, a difference? Oh, yeah, it definitely makes a difference. Like, that's what I think was the best thing about it to be honest. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you for coming for a ride with me and uh, there we go. So, 
So what's the big old maxi scoot like then on uh, wet days? And believe me, it does not come much wetter than this. It's an absolutely filthy day out and about on the uh, big old Bergman today. But, it has to be said, riding on this in inclement weather is not as grim as it looks. Uh, I say that, I hope you can actually see. Let's give you a bit of a clean. There we go. Because the uh, amount of weather protection that these big old scoots offer you is quite something. Obviously, you've got the big screen, but you've also got this massive frontal area. And if you look down here, I mean, it is absolutely filthy out here. It's raining quite hard. But actually, all down here is relatively dry, and I'm quite dry tucked behind here. I've got the heated seat on, I've got the heated grips on. I'm warm and comfortable. It really is not as bad a place to be as it probably looks on this video. In fact, out of all the two-wheelers I've ever read, ridden in the wet, this is the one that I would take. Let's get this white frame, come on. Of course, uh, with the Bergman, you've got the added bit of uh, electronic security through the ABS as well. So if you do need to brake sharply, you know it's going to uh, catch any skids. So yeah, if you need a bike uh, that you're going to be riding in rubbish weather like we get here in Blythe all the time, then the Bergman is pretty much unbeatable, I'd say, unless you're in a car. But uh, this is the next best thing for riding in dodgy weather. So at the start of the video, I said I would give you uh, an overall cost of ownership for one of these Suzuki Bergmans. So uh, as usual, what I've done is a little bit of research to work out what would be the cost to have one of these ready to ride sat in your garage, and the results are here. So there's a few things to take into account. First off, uh, what we here in the UK call road tax is actually vehicle excise duty. Because it's a 650cc, that will cost you £88 per annum. Cost you a little bit more if you pay monthly for some reason, it would come to £92.40 if you do that. But uh, £88 per annum if you're paying one lump sum. Uh, next, insurance. Uh, as usual, I went to my friends at Principal Insurance and they had my details available to them. Uh, and they gave me a quote for this very bike. Uh, and that came back as £189.65, fully comprehensive, uh, with a £250 excess. Now that is only indicative because of course that is just somebody in my position living where I do with my no claims bonus. But uh, £189.65 I didn't think was too bad for such a mahusive and quite expensive motorcycle. Uh, servicing. Next, I spoke to Daytona Motorcycles up in Ricelip there, one of the local Suzuki dealers, spoke to their service department, uh, and they said the first service, as usual, 600 miles, and uh, on this bike that would be uh, £95. Then the bike needs servicing every 4,000 miles, so quite a short service uh, interval on the scooter, uh, and that particular service depends on what needs doing and what mileage you go back at, but it could be anywhere between £160 and £300, depending on the service it is. So, took an average and said, well, let's go with 230 per annum for servicing costs. Okay, so add that lot up, assuming we do 4,000 miles a year, that's the uh, £88 for uh, tax, the 189 for insurance, and then the 230 for servicing, gives us a total of £507.65 per annum, or £42.30 a month, just to have the bike sat here, ready to ride. Doesn't include petrol, doesn't include uh, things like tyres, but that's the price that you could expect to have to spend to keep the bike ready to ride. Uh, and I've done a number of these calculations now for different bikes, and £42.30 actually is one of the cheaper bikes that I've done. So night time riding on the big old Bergman then. Well, I mentioned before that uh, there are certain aspects of this bike that thinks it's a car. And uh, I think the lights is another such area. It's got LED lights on here and uh, they actually throw out an amazing beam. These GoPro cameras just never show lights on bikes very well. Uh, but this, the lights on this bike are as good or better than any other bike I've ever ridden on. They're throwing out a massive beam ahead. This is on dip. Put them onto full. There we go, it's absolutely chucking out loads and loads of light there. You'll have to take my word for it. It really is uh, quite something in terms of the lights at night. The only thing that's uh, missing on the Bergman at night, just like many other motorcycles, is the switch gear isn't lit up. And on this, there's quite uh, a lot of switch gear. So you'd have to kind of know where that switch gear was to use it at night. But, uh, you know, if it was your bike, you'd get to know that over time. But certainly as far as the lights are concerned, there is uh, no lack of light coming on. Uh, to put the lights on a full beam, you've got the normal switch here, you just switch it up and it's on full, switch it down and it's on dip. And then there's a button at the front of the uh, left hand grip that gives you a flashing ability. 
like so. So all very straightforward and all works an absolute dream. So riding at night on here, no problem at all. Dashboard, nice and uh, nice and clear. Hopefully you can maybe the uh, GoPro picks that up, but lit up in white and uh, yeah, easy to read. No problems at all. Nothing to not like about riding the Bergman at night. So how about cleaning the big old Bergman then? One of my favourite pastimes, as you may know if you watch uh, my channel regularly. Well, the hardest bit on here is actually the swing arm and the rear wheel. Because the transmission is always engaged, it means it's quite hard to actually rotate that wheel uh, and get every part of it. So that's the bit that I found most difficult. Once you've done that though, uh, there's lots of these big plastic panels which are very, very easy to do. Uh, so no problem doing the majority of the bike. And then when it comes to uh, drying her off, you really do need a bike dryer because uh, there are quite a lot of nooks and crannies on here and the bike dryer makes quick work of uh, blowing away moisture there. And once she's done, she looks uh, absolutely splendid. So yeah, overall, uh, just the wheels really that are difficult and the swing arm otherwise easy to clean. So how about riding the big old Bergman in town then and the urban environment? Well, this is their bread and butter, isn't it? It's a really easy bike to ride, well, anywhere actually, uh, but including in town, mainly because it's got a very low centre of gravity, so when you stop, look, you can get your feet dead down. It feels doesn't feel like you're going to drop it at any moment. It's uh, got excellent visibility with these uh, big old mirrors at the side here, and it's got this feature that I really love. You press this blue button, and it folds them in so if you want to do some filtering you can get through narrow gaps and it goes to the same width as the handlebars which is brilliant why don't more touring bikes have that the bergman's got plenty of power off the lights so uh, you're always going to win the uh, traffic light drag weight race with cars that i've just left those for dust now so you can get out of trouble no problem at all and the other thing that's great about it because it's a big old scoop it's got its center of gravity really low down means it's uh, a really agile bike so if you come across an obstacle like this it's super easy just to whip round so yeah in town really superb bit of kit there's uh, nothing else really to match a scooter when it comes to the urban environment great stuff So to matters of fuel then, and for fueling up on the Bergman, well according to uh, Suzuki, uh, she does about 62 miles per UK gallon, and that seems to square with my riding so far on the bike. Seems pretty frugal to me, I seem to have been riding this for ages, and uh, I'm only now down on the fuel gauge to uh, two bars. So I'm uh, going up here just past one of my uh, favourite fuel stations, if you can have such a thing. So I'm going to get a fueled up, show you how that's done on the scooter, because it's slightly different to other scooters that I've used, and certainly different to uh, normal motorbikes. Good to see the white van force is out today. Sun's out. Get the white vans out. So I mentioned a little earlier that there are certain features about this bike that makes you think it's more like a car than a bike, and uh, fueling up <laughs> is one of those one of those uh, areas where the bike sort of thinks it's a bit like a car, because unlike a conventional scooter, where you fill up in the bottom. Uh, and unlike a conventional motorcycle, where you fill up in the tank, which would be here, this one, let me show you how you do the fueling up on here. It's actually down the back here, under this flap. Whoops. Just like a car. Isn't that cool? Come on. Got a bit of faff with gloves on. Looks like it goes in there. Will it just push in? No. There we go. Alright, bit of a faff with gloves on, but it works. Right, let's go play. So it turns out it was a bit of a faff to get the cap back on, a bit fiddly with the old bike gloves, but uh, otherwise no trouble of course, and uh, quite fun I think that it looks more like a car <laughs> than a motorcycle when you fill her up. 
Anyway, pleased to see the fuel gauge has registered immediately, they've got a full tank. So that's what fueling up is all about on the big old Bergman. So could you go touring on the big Bergman? Well, I see absolutely no reason why not. In fact, other than urban transport, I'd say this would be the absolutely perfect bike to go touring on. Mostly because it's really, really comfortable. It's got uh, great weather protection, as I've said before. Heated grips, heated seats for you and the passenger, if you're going to tour with a passenger. Loads of storage on the bike, so practical for carrying your luggage. Plenty of room under the seat for all your touring bits and pieces, or indeed uh, helmets or shopping, whatever. But uh, yeah, you could load this bike right up, stick a rucksack on, and you could uh, go away for a week, no problems at all. Uh, if you've got a passenger to go touring with, then a really comfortable place to be at the back. You've got the footboards, you've got the backrest. I think there'd be no complaints from the passenger. So, yeah, if touring's your thing and you want a touring bike, don't poo poo these. Again, cheap to run, pretty economic. Um, yeah, I think a really good bike to go touring on. Great on motorways too. There's, uh, there's nothing about this that makes me think it wouldn't be a good bike to go touring on. So at the start of the video, I said that I would uh, give you the list of things uh, that I've learned about the bike, both positives and negatives. So let's, uh, let's get the negatives out of the way first. I made a list so I don't forget any. And these are in no particular order, just things that I've noticed about the bike that I haven't liked so much. First off, uh, screen adjustment. Um, it's great that it's got an electric screen, but frankly, the adjustment is so limited, it only goes up and down about five or six inches. And uh, despite what I tell the missus, that isn't a great distance. So uh, actually, I think uh, it's quite nice that it's got electric screen, but the adjustment is neither here nor there, so that's a bit naff, really. Uh, so that's number one. Uh, next thing, a bit more important, suspension on the bike. Now, this isn't a performance bike, but once you... I mean, the thing is possible to go pretty fast, and once you wind it up and start throwing it around the back lanes, uh, you get to experience the limits of the handling. And the, uh, in the main, the bike's very stable, but I did find the suspension can get a bit out of shape once you ride it like that. And I described it as crashy, so uh, yeah, the suspension, a bit crashy, so that's not so good. Uh, next thing I noticed, the buttons on the right bar, uh, I found that they were quite fiddly to operate because of course you've got to operate the throttle. Uh, with a scooter you can't just pull the clutch in so that you coast uh, and then fiddle with buttons like you might do on a conventional motorcycle. Uh, as soon as you wind off the throttle the bike slows down due to engine braking. So you really have to keep the throttle open if you want to do, make any adjustments and actually adjusting those buttons on the right hand side quite tricky I found as well as controlling the throttle so that was a bit of a surprise thing that only really applies to scooters I guess. Um, next thing, uh, lacking cruise control for a bike that I think one of its primary purposes would be to, um, you know, longer journeys to up. Uh, I think a cruise control would be an excellent addition. Uh, it's a bit of a shame it doesn't have a cruise control. Um, next up, the looks of the bike. I mean, the thing is massive. I've got nothing against big bikes particularly, but I'm not sure that the bike looks that attractive. From the front angle, uh, it looks absolutely fine. It looks like a big old touring bike. You'd think it was a Yamaha or something behind you. But um, looking at the side of it, I mean, it's just massive. It's like a whale. It's almost like a car. And that, in fact, leads me to my final point well, final but one point on the negative points. And that is the bike sort of thinks it's a car. If you look at the dashboard, it's like a car. If you look at the way the fuel cap filler works, that's like a car. Uh, I mean, there comes to a point where if you want a car, you should just get a car. And that leads me on to the final point, which is cost. Now the cost on this, according to the website, is 9,199. You heard me right, 9,200 pounds effectively for this bike. Now for that same money, of course you shouldn't compare this with a normal motorcycle because of course, it's designed for a different, slightly different purpose. Um, but you can get, say, a Kawasaki Z900 uh, RS for that, which is a bike I absolutely loved. Um, and you can certainly get a small second-hand car, a very good one, uh, for that price. So if you are after a practical, uh, low-cost mode of transport, then this is starting to tread on, on car territory, so maybe you should just get a car. Now, of course, it's not all bad news, and this bike has lots of positives too. Uh, first off, the smooth, effortless power delivery on this thing. It's very, very easy to ride. You wind on the power, and off she goes. There are no roads in the UK that this, this bike can't keep up with traffic. In fact, they exceed it. It's absolutely got loads of power delivery, uh, power. It's effortless in its delivery, and it's beautifully smooth. This bike, easily capable of cruising at 100 miles an hour. I didn't do that, of course, but certainly on a motorway at 70 miles an hour, it holds its own, and it's got bags in reserve to overtake, so no problem with the power and, uh, and just the smooth way it does it. For a twin, I don't know what they've done with the engine because it feels uh, like something with more cylinders than two. It really is, no vibrations, lovely smooth delivery, so that's number one. 
Next thing, I guess it comes in a sort of practical category. The thing's just got acres of storage space. Not only has it got uh, room under the seat for two full face helmets, but it's got uh, two little cubby holes here and a massive glove box complete with a uh, cigar uh, charger port in there as well. So you can keep your phone or whatever charged up in the battery in the glove box so unbelievable amount of storage makes it very very practical um, the heated grips and the heated seats both passenger and rider work absolutely beautifully uh, that together with the big screen and the big frontal area and all the weather protection means that it again is a very practical bike the weather protection uh, and the comfort that this thing offers you is absolutely fantastic um, the other thing I like about it and this applies to all scooters is kind of the ability to stretch your legs because you can put your feet out front on the footboards tuck them underneath you like you're on a sports bike or just have them in the armchair position uh, you've got plenty of room to move around both your legs and your backside on the seat so you can stretch out it's a comfortable place to be really comfortable place to be um, the mirrors folding in nice touch showed you that on the uh, original review i did so it can aid a little bit in filtering i don't know why more, more bikes don't do that in reality did i use it much no i didn't do a great deal of filtering but it's a nice little touch shows they thought these things through and then the dash i mentioned it before that it's very car like but one of the upsides of that is the fact that it's got absolutely everything you need including a proper fuel gauge so really pleased to see that so uh, so yeah plenty to like about the big old bergman so there we have it, that's my uh, long-term review of the 2018 uh, Suzuki Bergman 650 Executive. The first Maxi Scoot that I've actually had as a long-term loaner. And uh, in some ways, I'm going to miss the bike uh, from the garage. I have to say, the practicality of this thing really shines through. And for the last couple of weeks, I've just had to nip out for something quickly to the cash point or the shops or whatever. This has been the favoured bike to do. I've used it much more than I thought I was going to do. If you're one of the people that laughs at scooters and thinks they're not proper two-wheelers, uh, not proper transport, then... Uh, I encourage you to have a go on one. They really do uh, fill a sort of a niche that a normal motorcycle doesn't necessarily fill. That said, if you're after a two-wheeler at uh, £9,200, these are quite expensive, so you're really going to want a scooter to have one of these because you can buy a conventional motorcycle, some nice ones for that sort of price, or indeed a small second-hand car, as I said. So all that's left for me now is to thank again Suzuki UK for letting me borrow the bike uh, for a couple of weeks and to thank you for watching. Hope you found that of some interest and look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Mr. Dem Flyer. Cheerio. We're working with our partners Speedo Angels throughout July to give you 20% off the entire range of dashboard screen protectors and get yourself one extra free fitting kit when you use the discount code MISSENDEN. Just go to www.speedo-angels.com.